Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. If, if I had to have a segment, Monique, called this motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> it would probably, right. I probably would uh, use it, it to you then. I probably would use it for this video <laughs> right here. here. Press play, <laughs> Mitch McConnell. Uh. Madam President, anyone who's been attentive <clears throat> To the news these past few days has learned about the complete debacle that unfolded in last November's election for North Carolina's 9th Congressional District. Soon after Election Day, allegations of illegal ballot harvesting and vote tampering clouded a close result. The wrongdoing seemed to have benefited the Republican candidate over the Democrat. Just last week, we saw the State Board of Elections <coughs> unanimously call for a new election. Now, Madam President, for years and years, every Republican who dared to call for common sense safeguards for Americans' ballots was demonized by Democrats and their allies. We were hit with left-wing talking points insisting that voter fraud wasn't real. Never happens, they said. Well, that fraud just didn't happen. That modest efforts to ensure that voters who are who they say they are <clears throat> and are voting in the proper place were really some sinister right-wing plot to present people, prevent people from voting. So now, as you might expect, now that an incident of very real voter fraud has become national news and the Republican candidate seems, seems to have benefited, these long-standing Democratic talking points have been really quiet. Haven't heard much lately from Democrats about how fraud never happens. They've gone silent. Now some are singing a different tune. Now there's a new interest in ensuring the sanctity of American elections. I've been focused for decades on protecting the integrity of elections. So I'd like to welcome my friends on the left to their new realization. They've just discovered that this subject really matters. Like I said, <laughs> this mo mo money gone. No, it makes me so uh, Hold on, Chris. Money, go ahead. It, okay. it, it really, it, it truly, it makes me furious to the point that I could cry hmm. uh, because I have watched this man ruthlessly grab power ever since he ascended to this position and it is done in an amoral manner and to be able to stand there and first call it voter fraud when he knows the difference between voter fraud and election fraud and then two to say that it's the republicans who have cared about the sanctity of elections while they refuse to update the vra so that we could have protected voting rights it's beyond anything that uh, you could fathom from somebody who has an obligation to serve the people of the United States. And Chris, I, he's disgraceful. Chris, you want to comment? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think maybe somebody invaded his body or something. Did he just say... A long time ago. That, <laughs> did he just say that that was voter fraud or did I... Did yeah, I right? he said it was voter fraud when it actually was election fraud and he conveniently skipped over mm -hmm. that it was the Republican Mark Harris who was doing it. Yeah, well, uh, how could it be voter fraud when uh, the voters had right. nothing to do with it? <laughs> right. I, I, I'm confused. Well, I'm confused. Well, again, though, no. <laughs> this is that's like me being confused with the Republican Party <laughs> of sending a tweet out today trying to call Michael uh, trying to call Michael Cohen a liar when he was deputy finance chair for the same damn RNC. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, did y'all thought we forgot? You know, but again, th this is. This is what is hilarious here, because to your point, Republicans in North Carolina were no, see them, see them, certify the election. Then the lie was so powerful. Uh, yeah, we might want to have some hearings. Uh, they're like, but now we still want to see. It was so. Then they, they had no choice then to call for a new election. Mm -hmm. Now Mark Harris, now he's sick. Now what I love this one when he was on the stand and testifying. <laughs> Okay, I love this one. He's on te testifying, and then they hit him with, but your son said this, and he went, oh, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I, think I, I think I caught something mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. And so my memory is lapsing 
right now because I'm sick. No, your ass lying. Mm -hmm. well, but, oh, no, go ahead. Don't believe. Well, so this is one of the things, and Chris actually alluded to it earlier. You know, these this is one of those instances where Republicans make it hard for us, people mm -hmm. like me, people like Chris, to really get Black Republicans. <laughs> yes. Um, Honest Republicans. Yeah, to, to get people, um, to, to move people in, in, in any way. And I think part of the problem is, is that, you know, a lot of these things, I think there's, there are a lot of political calculations that have racial implications that the party does not understand. So they do things because they say, well, they're Democrats, you know, so we're going to do these things. We're going to, you know, push for these sort of policies, not understanding the racial implications. And so for us, we have to explain to them, OK, well, these are the racial implications and they may not see that. I think it actually makes it difficult for us. I'm not going to say that they under that, you know, all of this is intentional, you know, with the intent to be racist or whatever the case may be. That element is definitely there, but I think a lot of these things are politically motiv motivated and because so many blacks are Democrats, it you know, it ends up becoming racial. Bob line, Bob line is Doc, to they were sitting here trying mm -hmm. to steal the damn election. Exactly. And they got busted and now they got egg on their face and now what it has done is it has exposed the the the, vote, the voter operation they had there. Mm -hmm. The fallacy. They were sitting here trying to steal exactly. multiple elections and again and the other problem is you got the punk ass US attorney there in in that area who refuses to go after Mark Harris and he still walk around like he blind going where is voter fraud mm -hmm. when it's sitting right in front of him and he's done nothing to prosecute these folks in this case. Well, and this is a great thing, at least in this moment, about transparency and records. Because if it was not for the records that North Carolina kept, we would have never been able to detect this. But this is the stuff that Mitch McConnell does that I think is, it is dishonest. It's intellectually dishonest. He's not a dumb man. And he's playing footsie and playing cutesy with all these, oh, well, it was, it was election, it was voter fraud. He knows it was election fraud. Most people don't care enough to commit fraud on this scale. The people who care are the people who want to win. Right. And the people that they want to disable are black people, young people, Latino people, poor people, old people. And they do that and they do it with impunity and they don't care. And I don't like this idea that, oh, they don't mean it. Yes, they do. These are not silly people. Democrat, black, Latino are almost synonymous. So we know who we're talking about. And so they don't do this in these districts, not knowing. Bladen County, they know who lives there. Right. They know it down exactly. to the person, to the block. These people have an enormous amount of information that they are marshalling. Now, do they want to be able to hold on to black Republicans and hurt black Democrats at the same time? Yes. The problem is they cut their knees off because there are lots of black folks who would have sympathy with the party, but they cannot have sympathy with racists and people who want to say things like, oh, well, we're not sure because this is an illiberal not democratic action that they're taking, but calling it protection of democracy. And right. It's the exact opposite of that. And it's to cut off any kind of conversation as you were talking about. It is manipulating people so that we can sort of forestall all of the consequences that should come from this, one of them being going to jail, paying fines, and all this other stuff. And it's not just Harris. It's everybody that enabled him. It's those people who signed those ballots. Mm -hmm. It's those people who didn't turn them in and threw them away. All of that is illegal, and we know it, and they mm -hmm. know it. Can I get a witness? All right, y'all. <laughs> All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, calling all HBCU alumni, students, and leaders. You know, the Ford Motor Company, HBCU, Mobility Challenge, and win $25,000 for your school. Building on their long-term support of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. The winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement the proposal. Now, the deadline is to apply. It's March 31st, 2019. Go to fgb.life for more information to apply. fgb.life for more information to apply. And if you're lit watching, tell your HBCU that if they don't know about this, they need to be doing it. You should be pushing this on social media. Again, folks, 25 grand uh, that could go to one of the HBCU campuses. Ford goes further in our community, and we certainly uh, appreciate them being a partner here on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.